Welcome to this week's episode of Campbell and Jones Meet the Monsters, the podcast where we explore the cinematic legacy of the classic monsters. I'm John Campbell. With me as always, Brendan Jones. Cinematic legacy, you see, say. Yeah, yeah. I think legacies are complicated things, John. <laughs> they, they, um, they, they, of course, are a collection of the great stuff, mm-hmm, the mm-hmm, high marks, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and the very low marks. I, I have a question for you. I, have, yeah. uh, I want to quiz you. Yeah. Um, and the audience can play along at home. What movie, and I'm using the appropriate air quotes, mm-hmm. what movie seems like it was shot in the 50s Looks like it was shot in the early 70s, mm-hmm. but was released in 1981. Hmm. I want to give our listeners time to think, but I will say I have a I have an inkling it might be Frankenstein Island. Oh God, you're right. <laughs> oh, you're so right. Oh you boy. I watched this thing. It was, it's so funny. I mean, again, nothing we've only been in this decade for a couple of movies, but it did feel kind of like we had I, moved out of an era into a different era. And then this thing single-handedly tosses us back like three decades. No, no. I, I thought the same thing. I kept being like, Oh God, it, it's 1981 somehow. I don't know. Jesus I actually Christ. did look online to see if this had been shot earlier and then released. You what, know, what was the answer 81. to one? Did you find out? But, uh, it was shot in uh, like 1980. Okay. So in other words, it's just that you had a filmmaker whose main stuff was from the 50s, mm-hmm. who has not changed his style I mean, or gotten a bigger budget. We, let's talk about writer director Jerry Warren. Do uh, we have to? Uh, I mean, just because I mean, just I just want to set the precedent for what uh, what we're dealing with here. This is a man oh, who man. opens up his career with 1956's Man Beast. Uh, and then from there start. from there we have the incredible petrified world mm-hmm. teenage zombies mm-hmm. Ooh, i like this title terror of the blood hunters sure uh, uh the violent and the damned wow face of the screaming werewolf that one i've seen attack of the mayan mummy Mm-mm. curse of the stone hand no nope. creature of the walking dead no, but you're about to hit his most famous one. The Wild Woman, Wild World of Batwoman. Even I know this one, yeah. Yeah, uh, that one I've seen. House Holy of the mackerel. Black Death. And then this, his final film, his crowning achievement, Frankenstein Though he intended Island. to make a sequel to Frankenstein Island. Well, he lives another seven years after he makes this movie, so. Uh, apparently he was like, oh, okay, I've learned my lesson. Uh, the sequel is going to be much more serious, not as campy. <laughs> <laughs> God. Oh, I see it. It needed drama. Yes. It needed what is that word? Yeah. Plot. It needs a plot. Yeah, 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 yeah. This movie, John. Jesus. This is officially, and I don't think it'll ever be topped, the worst movie we've watched on this podcast. Agreed. And uh we're not being Mr. and Mrs. Hyperbole. You be Mrs., okay? <laughs> um Thanks. <laughs> That's all right, uh, but I'm glad you took my name. Uh, Mr. <laughs> and Mrs. Hyperbole here. Yeah. This is the worst film that we've seen for the podcast, yeah. and we both agreed yeah. it may be, it's in the running yeah. of being the worst film we've ever seen, period. It's, not it's, not just horror oh, no. or monster-related. No. It may be the worst film we've ever seen. It's, it's, certain, it's easily top five, if not number one. Uh, this it's is, incompetent yeah. in every single category Th- that is my barometer uh, uh, like i was comparing it to manos the hands of fate the movie i often describe as the worst movie i've ever seen in that it fails on every level as a film yeah across technical the board. creative Acting. like sometimes you'll see a terrible movie but one of the actors who knows yeah. came out of a college drama department they're actually quite good but they're yeah. in a terrible movie nope. that happens and you go wow too bad for you but you're good this has no good acting yeah. has no good writing no good cinematography yeah. nothing about it is in the slightest bit competent but it does feature two giants of the genre film it yes briefly uh, especially for one uh you talk yeah. you're talking about john carradine and cameron yes. mitchell yes absolutely yeah uh john carradine is in this movie question mark and Cameron Mitchell's in it and he's the one thing where it's like 
they just said, Cameron, just do what you're going to do. And he's, he's actually acting in the scenes, which is stunning. What's stunning about it is no one else is acting. So it seems weird Mm -hmm. that there's someone that's actually trying to add something to what is one of the worst experiences you ever have. So I'm looking here at Steve Brody, who plays the unforgettable character of Jocko. Yeah. Uh, Oh God. (laughs) Oh God. This guy though, had a, had a, had a career as like a, Second rate character actor. I mean, he was in like Out of the Past and the Kane Mutiny and sure, you know, sure, as named characters and a lot of TV. I mean, he was a working actor. He was also in the Wild World of Batwoman. Um, yep, yep. You know, Robert Clark. All I can say is, uh, Steve Brody as Jocko um, mm-hmm. made me mad. <laughs> he made me Jocko. Angry. I actually, again, uh, this is amazing because I just watched the film yesterday, but I did find uh, where he was buried, his burial plot. Uh, I did a quick red eye. Oh, no, no, Brandon. You beat up another corpse. And I punched him in the face. Yeah. (laughs) I punched him in his cackling Jocko face. Steve Brody as Jocko. Yeah. Um, Uh, So, yeah, he... um, and then he knows what he did. So we, he so we have a couple did. of semi-legitimate actors here because there's also Robert Clark who plays these, who I only call in my notes science guy. Um, yeah, science guy. Doctor Paul Hadley. Well, they call him Doc. They do. Yeah, I I kept calling him science guy. Uh, and he this guy had a long career of a lot of like B sci-fi stuff in the fifties and a ton of TV, of course. Um, yeah. So, so these guys are or were, they're both dead, um, working actors. You know, they were, you know, a- legitimate actors. You wouldn't know it from watching this movie in any way. Yeah, I mean, when I'm saying there are only a couple of people, I, yeah. the thing is with that, it's, yeah. it, these are all working actors. Well, okay, I, I'm going to say the older ones are all working actors, and they are, you know, the, the kind of people that filled every TV Western in the 50s or film mm-hmm. B picture yeah. uh, a lot of B noir stuff yeah. and they won't have been the leads they'll have been the guy that came in and said right. I found him Rocco we're going to meet him tonight those are those guys <laughs> I love that guy and that's a great performance that guy yeah thank you uh, our, that one line yeah. better than anything delivered in this film <laughs> and that's not problem. me patting myself I can in the back. barely hear a lot of the lines that are like there's a lot of lines well, that's, that's true <laughs> Yeah, even even just the basis of sound recording is is oh yeah. god. No, there's it it always sounds like the microphones are too far away and you're just barely catching what anyone's saying. Oh, it's um, terrible. It's terrible. It, I I also want to talk about Catherine Victor who plays yeah, Sheila yeah. Frankenstein, the classic Sheila Frankenstein, the beloved Von character Helsing. from the 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 canon of this. But I just want to talk about <laughs> yeah. the fact that she did a little bit of acting, but primarily spent her career as a continuity coordinator for Walt Disney Animation. I'm glad she got work. Yeah, like and actually, I'm, I'm looking through that her goes career much farther than. Okay, that can't be the same woman. What? I guess maybe it can, but she was I, born in 1923, and she was still, I mean, continuity checking. But up till 2002, like two years before she died. Yeah, man. That's an amazing. I mean, but long. and looking through her, these were all the shows I watched as a kid: Tailspin, Goof Troop, sure. Darkwing Duck, Bonkers. I loved Bonkers. Bonkers was great. Yeah, because it was a it was a kids animated cop show. I loved it. Yeah. Uh, uh these are all fine. Fascinating. Shows. Fascinating to me. Uh, <laughs> and of course, but- Andrew Duggan as the Colonel. <laughs> Uh, he is recognizable as well. Yeah. He is a face you have seen, but I love the fact that he just shows up at the end and he spends one scene wearing uh-huh. a, a uh-huh. little toss off uh-huh. army Navy store hat. It's uh-huh. like, you get it. I'm a Colonel. And he just sort of and, has a lot of, uh, hmm. now you're, you're telling me there's some kind of mysterious Island. Hmm. And then he's on the Island and goes, well, you guys are obviously on drugs because there's nothing here. Yeah, All right. Pa- see you later. Pack it in boys. They're crazy. They're crazy. That's yeah. the end of my part. Yeah. Anyway, can I have my money now? <laughs> <laughs> Thought it was weird they left that in. Uh... <laughs> Every scene of this film ended with someone, whether him or someone else, saying, can I have my money now? Yeah. Hey, this is not the last 
we'll see you this guy his final performance is in a return to salem's lot yeah we'll talk, we'll talk about later this season which we're all excited to talk about uh Look, it's probably going to be shit but nothing we will see no from this point out nope will be we'll never complain about a movie again after this, oh, this is... oh we'll complain yeah but then we'll remind ourselves yeah well it's not frankenstein island yeah uh can we talk about this poster we can um the poster is just as incompetent as the movie is what i love um because th- i'm happy i love what it ch- what they've chosen to focus on yeah it's not a lot i mean so these are images from the movie for the most yeah. part but, it looks like what they did was they took set photos, yeah. then they laid paper on top of it to trace them, yeah. and then they ran them through a Xerox machine a few times till they were kind of coolly blurry, Yeah, and then they cut them out and then did a collage. Yeah. Here's the thing, Brandon. I cannot tell what is in the middle of that three images. I cannot either. I don't know. It's so blurry. It looks like a ink blot test like a rorschach well it looks like possibly the island itself because mm-hmm. it looks like rock face yeah like yeah i get top. i get that part and then what's, what's happening top? above it i couldn't tell you what that is Jesus some sort of Christ. yeah this corona is, of light or something i have awful, no idea um, but we have these excited cartoon balloons saying humans controlled by an alien brain yeah here man is transformed by weird experiments and this is kind of true. Yeah. Uh, you have a picture of, um, on the left, is that Frankenstein's creature? Uh, yes, I think so. And then on the right, the the they showed it to us about 18 times in the movie. Yeah. A terrible prop human skull that has a dagger they, shoved into they, its eye they socket. Were, they were way too proud of this prop. They keep showing it again and again throughout the movie, and you're going, They're like, please well, don't. You know what we need here? Uh, to to link scene to scene. Hey, let's go back to the the skull with the 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 dagger in it again. I, when we as when we go through the plot in quotes of this movie, I want to point out how many times I use the term for some reason uh, throughout <laughs> all of this because it really is like everything that happens. I'm just going. Then for some reason we look at this or we cut away to something random. I don't. I don't. Usually know. this this kind of storytelling, and I've brought up Axe Scott before, but this is yes. like kid type storytelling where it's not that they don't have a cool idea for a scene or or a cool story idea. They just don't know how to tie things together. So it's like, um, um, my puppy uh, found a super cape, and my puppy can shoot lasers. Um, and when this lady's walking down the street and uh, um, a creature comes up out of the uh, sewer and is like, ah. And then she's she screams, but there's a bus, and on the bus is that dog that has the super cape. You're like, even that I think makes more sense uh, linking scene to scene than this mm-hmm. movie. It makes no logical sense of why nope. a character from one scene who has said something is now doing something in the next scene. Nope. And, and also, uh, what characters? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, no, it, I think you did the emphasis wrong. It's what characters? <laughs> Because these are some characters. Oh John. man, the 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 group of people I refer to as just the guys through most of my yeah. notes. Then <laughs> yeah, the guys yeah, the do guys. this. I don't know who these guys are. Uh, there is one alternate tagline for this movie, Brandon. If you'd like oh, to hear it, please. I would like to hear it. The power is seven million volts. It's alive. Oh yeah, that's that's what it is. <laughs> and then I I don't always bring these up, but I I do sometimes when I find them amusing. The uh, plot tags that yeah. IMDb uses. Uh, here are the ones that po- there's 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 several, but the ones that just pop up before I click more are buxom, big breasts, breasts, <laughs> sexploitation, <laughs> Doctor Victor Frankenstein. Those are all very misleading. Um, there there is, I think buxom is the most accurate. Buxom is is accurate because that's what that's the it, level of we're dealing with here. There's no nudity in the movie. It's all no. Just, there's no nudity. This is this is uh, again. It's very mid fifties. Like that, yes, that's uh, it. it we'll feels have so chicks tame. in fur bikinis run around. It feels for the whole movie so so tame. Not that I'm saying God, I really want some nudity in this thing. But I, I, what I'm saying, like it just it's we. I mean, we watched Humanoids of the Deep the other week. You know, what I mean, like this feels yeah. so like 
it all feels ages dated. friendly. Yeah, this this movie feels like it's in 1981. G. This would have felt dated. There's no there's no like, blood. There's no cursing. No. There's no nudity. No. There, no. I mean, especially coming after the howling. Good yes. lord. Uh, there's nothing. This going thing on here. feels like drive-in fodder, Z-level yeah. drive-in fodder from 1955. And it, this and is what it feels like. I think you're right in that this Jerry Warren just knows no other way to make movies. Yeah, this That's... is like he he his, his idea of what movies were mm-hmm. crystallized in 1955. Yeah. He said, "This is what movies are." Yeah. And he here just, are mine. And Hope you enjoy. Going. And then here, even even by the cheap B standards of his stuff in the fifties, here this movie has no money and no audience. Mm. Uh, the only reason I kn- I even knew of this movie was Cameron Mitchell was in a, an episode of The Incredible Hulk, and over on the yeah. Green Mile when we scanned his IMDb, Gregoni and I were both struck by the title Frankenstein Island. Yeah. So now I've seen it, and I can tell Gregoni, please don't watch it. Although he should watch the Riff Tracks version of it. Which yeah, I, which that, I, I will recommend. probably revisit just for that. I do, um, recommend, I, I do I, recommend the riff tracks. It makes this <clears throat> mildly palatable. It's it's horrible. Yeah. Uh, y- if you guys are just listening to our podcast yeah. to get to the end for our recommendations, yeah. And who would? Yeah. Who would? I just got to know. I just got to know. You, should I watch it? No. Yeah. Go ahead and turn us off right now. Yeah. We're both saying don't watch this for your own good. And for like your and own like good. actively make a point of telling people you didn't watch. It. like be very yeah. vocal about not watching it because it's from what i understand of of uh biology um which is i have vast knowledge mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but every memory every sensation uh it 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 yeah. encodes itself into your yeah. brain it actually becomes part of the physical makeup of your of your brain yeah and so uh what we're doing by saying don't watch this yeah. we don't want to taint yeah. future generations I, do, you, do you look at this show as i also do over in the action shelf as us taking the bullet for the listeners sometimes yeah that's I, exactly yeah. it these we this, watch this so you don't have it to. is our sworn and sacred duty to tell you <laughs> please don't watch this and it's sandwiched between two of the best movies we'll watch this season so yes i know i do find thing. its placement absolutely perfect because yeah. going from the Howling to American Werewolf in London. Yeah, I mean that's actually too rich of a dinner. Yeah, um, they're so great. But this is so like do somebody... I love the fact that we end up with this thing in between. Holy hell, what a palate cleanser! No, it's it's like uh, yeah, two top choice sirloin steaks, and in between it's a plate of cat poop. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and Fred Armisen will demand we eat that cat poop. Um... <sighs> oh man. Okay. Let's. I, I. I have one word for you, Brandon, to describe the beginning of this movie. I'm ready. Balloons. Knew it. <laughs> balloons. Um, it's for six some reason, minutes of balloons. Called, for some reason, this movie called Frankenstein Island <laughs> opens with hot air balloons with no context, and and from what we can tell. The hot air balloons are sentient and talking to each other. <laughs> I know. It's insane. It's only shots of balloons with dialogue over them. We never cut to the guys in the baskets of the balloons or anything. Yeah, like talking on radios. No, we're hearing them supposedly, I guess, talking balloon to balloon. But since we just see balloons hanging there, it's like two balloons are going, hey, do you know yeah. where those other guys ended up? For the, I don't know. I can't see them. They're probably movie, in the ocean. When this movie started, I thought I'd lost my mind. <laughs> No, I know. Like, Jesus, all right. I, I, I know things are bad right now with COVID and stuff like this, but have I gone this insane? <laughs> you you have the balloons, you have the talking, and yeah. then when they cut to the credit, the or at least the title of the movie, they do a standard, you're looking at a lab with, with uh, Frankenstein equipment and the words Frankenstein Island For come one up. Shot. Then you go back to the balloons. That's the thing, that's because I go like, okay, now we're going to transition to the montage of lab equipment with the titles <laughs> over. No, you get one thing and like a bolt of electricity goes up the two poles and then yep. boom, back to balloons, back to more balloons with titles. And I'm just like, what is this movie? All they are setting up is that apparently there was a uh and i mean we don't find out it was a long distance balloon race until much later but apparently uh one balloon yeah. out of several went down somewhere in the ocean we don't even know what ocean until later they mention they're coming from manila speaking of uh action shelf we just did a movie that was yeah. set there so uh, we can assume somewhere in the atlantic uh right 
I Philippines? Fu- yeah. Atlantic? Yes. yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, so apparently a balloon went down. They're like, well, those people, we don't see it. And they, they just must be dead. Mm-hmm. And we cut to then the guys from Crashed Balloon ending up on the beach of this island. And immediately, there are four of these guys. There are four of these guys, and good luck telling them apart. Other than, I mean, they they look different. But yes, I, it came down to their costumes. But one guy has glasses and is middle aged. So, and they call him Doc. So he's the smart one. He's they the, call him Doc. He's the guy I referred to in my sci- in my notes as science guy. Science guy. Yeah. Then there is other middle aged guy who seems to be the level headed one. Don't know his name, but he has dark hair and a beard. Then yes. you have. The two irritating, supposedly oh. younger guys. The one is oh. has such a receding hairline. I was like, I'm sorry, man. If you're trying to pull off, like, I'm just a carefree college student. I'm like, yeah, 48 year old. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other one who's dressed. Oh, I need to be very careful about it. But anyway, <laughs> there's another one who's also one of the young guys, and he's got a dandy little uh, handkerchief around his neck yeah. Um, as if he's cosplaying Fred from Scooby-Doo. So I call these guys funny guy and long hair. Yeah, long hair is uh, the one with the, the bandana. And, and they these guys the don't have IMDb photos, so I have no idea which one is which. Here's the thing. They have crashed in the middle of the ocean. Mm-hmm. Uh, in their hot air balloon. Mm-hmm. They have made it to an island, yes. and they've made it to an island in an inflatable raft. Yeah. They are actually totally bone dry mm-hmm. when they come up on the island. Oh, also their dog is with them. Melvin. Their dog. Melvin. Mel- what a horrible name Mel- for a dog. Is it? Or is it the best name for And by dog? the way, Melvin is playing himself in this movie. Oh, thank God. <laughs> um, His only screen credit. He's, I can't believe he, that because Melvin is one of the best things in the movie. He said, "He said I did it all, man. Everything I need to say in film, I said with Frankenstein Island." He goes, "Everything you need to know about Melvin, right up on that screen." <laughs> um, so they 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 uh, wash up on the uh, on this uh, the beach, and are they concerned because no. they are lost in the middle of the ocean? Nope. No. In, in fact, fact, the two young guys are like grab ass and running across the beach. Oh, we're out of and, and then they're like, this is where I dubbed him funny guy. Funny guy goes into a uh, southern preacher kind of impression. Oh, my God. Yeah, he's like going, kneel and thank the Lord yeah. and you have been blessed. And da, 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 da. I will, I will acknowledge, because I did watch the Rift Tracks version, I will acknowledge when they made a joke, so I'm not claiming it's my own, that they did say he he, he runs into a second-rate Robin Williams character impression. Oh, my God. It, it's, it's not second. It's fourth, <laughs> possibly fifth-rate. Yeah, yes, absolutely. It's totally that. Good God! The kind of and character he also do doesn't do that ever again in the movie. Well, no, I guess that's I, a good thing. But For a second, I thought, because this is the first we see him, I'm going, is this this character? Is this then, guy some sort of religious fanatic or something? Oh no, that's right. We don't know him well enough at this point to know he's actually <laughs> to doing do it's a joke. A bit. I know. But I thought, well, this is a weird choice. Uh, you have, you then have. Uh, I think it's level-headed guy with the beard, or maybe it's science guy, but goes up is like, guys, could you stop fooling is, around? Is that and then Dino? the the one that's on his knees, he gets in an all fours position, which allows funny guy. Oh no, no okay, okay, a- allows- I got it here. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Mark is level-headed guy. Okay. Uh, I think Dino is funny guy, and I think Curtis is long hair. I think uh, that's right. Possibly. You may... Kurt, Curtis and Dino's may be flipped. I don't they, know. They might be. All I'll say is one of these guys is played by an actor whose name is Tane Bodkin. Yeah, when that came up, I was like, "Wow, that's Tane Bodkin." It's I, Tane Bodkin. Let me, let me. But the uh, whole thing of him getting on Google all fours right is there. just so the other guy can push one of the dudes over okay. him. It's another like we're f- having funny pranks on I, the uh, beach. <laughs> I did look it up. Tane Bodkin plays funny guy, so I did have them reversed. Okay, so, so Curtis... receding hairline is Tane Bodkin. Yes, receding hairline, funny guy. Yes, and I will say. If you Google this guy, the very first picture of him <laughs> is him in drag doing a funny face. So I Ooh. think he did a lot of I'm the funny guy in a movie. Because that sounds and this great. is this is in some movie called Comrade Ham Oh, it's an episode of Sledgehammer. 
Oh, wow. Great. Oh, shit. Okay, that's amazing. I love Sledgehammer. <laughs> I like the way you're like, you know what? I'm taking everything back I almost said about because this Because Sledgehammer is an amazing show. And a great song. Yes. <laughs> um, I, uh, I hate them immediately, all these people. Yeah, I but, uh, I, it, but the thing is like, oh, no, the these are the protagonists? Oh, no. The thing I love the best, this is within the first four minutes of them on the beach, Yeah, is they're holding their inflatable raft, and they're like going, well, let's see. We got to find our way up this cliffside. Yeah, we got to find out what's up around here. And he goes... Uh, and we're going to need to start gathering wood. If we can find enough uh, good, long, uh, straight yeah. sticks, we can make a raft. Yeah, right away, man. Okay, we can make a raft. He says, holding <laughs> the a raft. still hole, yeah. not damaged, nope. not inflatable punctured, raft. inflated raft. He's like, yeah, we can start making a raft. This is no Every good. Every time they bring up raft to this movie, I'm going, you have one that's whole yeah. and in good shape sitting on the beach and they talk right about now. making a raft a lot in this movie they do it's a lot but in this particular case he is holding a raft while saying we have to find sticks to build a raft. uh meanwhile I hate them all. my note here just says doctor berates long hair for having injured wrist yeah this is weird <laughs> The whole thing with the arm thing, I never understood. I never got it either. There's a running thing throughout the movie that there's some sort of beam, ray, mental projection, I don't know what, that makes your wrist hurt real bad. It looks like the way they do and it also uh, is accompanied by a weird sound effect. Ooh. And then later they try to say something like, anytime you mention another place yes. or something like yes, that, that's exactly it causes... What it is. Some sort of thing where, and I guess the guy just, uh, I can't wait to get home again. Ah, ah, ah. And it, the whole thing is they grab their arm, yeah. and at least funny guy uh, with the receding hairline, when it happens to him in a few minutes, it almost looks like a magnet is pulling their arm down. The way it looks like they're trying to keep their arm from like pulling them to the earth. I have no idea what's Initially, going. I thought it was some sort of paralysis. Yes, like that's what the it doctor was. just like, goes, hey, uh, hey, uh, just uh, wiggle this around, uh, wave your hand around. Does that feel better? Yeah, okay. Yeah. You'll... And he's acting like, oh, this is no big deal. This is what happens when you crash land on a, on a beach. <laughs> yeah, here and there. Probably took a wrist injury somewhere. Uh, yeah. Meanwhile, Melvin the dog has found a cave, and they're like, let's go inside. Yep. And immediately, I don't understand these guys. Because uh, I'm not going into <laughs> Mysterious Cave. Uh, so they, they Well, they had no other. I mean, there's the way they filmed it, there's nowhere else for them to go because it's sheer cliff yeah. that goes to the beach. So the they, cave is like, well, maybe that'll they, take us somewhere. They go into cave, and for uh, just a couple frames, I just write oh, down... it's the weirdest thing. I just thing. write down, quick carotene pr projection. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're walking through a dark cave. Mm -hmm. They don't have a light. They're like, ah. And for half a second, and I thought I had done shrooms... <laughs> And that's coming from a person who, A, has never done shrooms, Same and B, yeah. doesn't like the taste of mushrooms. Yeah. I hate that, mushrooms. That, honestly, that's what's been keeping you away from the psychotropics. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just the taste. Yeah. And I the just, texture. Yuck, uh, mushrooms. Yeah, mushrooms. I would love second, to have hallucinations. I just can't stand that taste. <laughs> for half a second, yeah. you see uh, David Carradine's face. Oh, no, no, John Carradine. John Carradine. Carradine. Sorry. I would be been, interesting if it had been David Carey. I was going to say, he. <laughs> this is a time when his career was going quite well, so this would be a major yes, step down. That would be very uh, even weirder. Robert Carradine's face from Revenge of the Nerds. A movie that um, hasn't been released. Yeah, hasn't been released. He was probably on set. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so the, the, the face just flickers in the middle of the air, and I'm like, what the fuck? I, I just went that, okay, John Carradine, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't say anything at this point. Nope. At some point, he oh. will. Oh, he, oh, oh, will he ever? In fact, he'll, he'll say be the saying same thing. the same things over and over and over again. What, he worked 10 minutes on this movie? Like, <laughs> Oh, I don't think it was 10 minutes, man. That's he generous. Goes, what do you want me to say? The power of the power? Okay, got it. All right, let's go. Yeah. He literally yeah. never the stopped. The golden thread. He the literally golden thread. never stopped moving. He was just walking through the set and then right out the <laughs> exit. <clears throat> I'll do your lines. Just keep the camera on me as I walk from here to the parking Here we go. Lot. The power, the power, the golden thread, and <laughs> right in the car. God damn uh, it. This movie is horrible. Send me my money. Um, 
So they they <laughs> not, other than that, nothing happens in the cave. They exit out the other side of it pretty easily. Well, that is where they. I mean, that was where they should have gone because it does lead out into the wide breadth of the island where they see all these dead trees and of course science guy is like why these would be perfect for building our raft <laughs> quick boys let's start gathering up these dead tree branches yep. uh, and then once again i think this is where he says uh something about man back home and funny guy is like oh ah, my wrist my wrist yep. yikes it's, it's just so what the fuck is <laughs> this thing but uh, almost immediately after this happens, we meet a uh, a group of women in leopard bikinis. I okay, oh, okay. Oh God! Even watching, I was not ready um, for this. I was not prepared for this. I wasn't either. I just, yeah. I mean, I have seen Wild World of Batwoman, and yeah. I certainly know this guy is like, well, you got to give the guys what they want. So, uh, in the words of uh, in the words of Don DeMello, a little some for daddy, a little some for daddy. And in this case, it is uh, all Caucasian women yep. uh, in leopard bikinis. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Leopards are not indigenous to yeah. any of these islands. No. They just aren't. No. I don't know why they have leopard skin bikinis other than that's what jungle girls look like, right? Yeah. They all speak English. Yeah, yeah I'm uh, working on another jungle girl picture. And... Um, very quickly, I mean, the guys are like, hey. Uh, and the girl, the leopard print bikini girls are like, hey, about the guys. Yeah. But almost instantly, like, as they follow these these ladies, they find another one of the ladies strung up between two trees. Yeah. At first, I think, torture victim? I have no idea what's I mean, going on. I mean, that would not be out of place for the Jungle Girl movies by any stretch. Right, exactly. Way. But what's hilarious to me is the guys are like, we don't know about their strange ways. Yeah. They see this woman uh, tied at, at the wrists and ankles. It, let's not make any trees. quick judgments, gentlemen. This right. may be and entirely that, consensual. Yeah, you might think this is a thing for concern. But what cracked me up is uh, not funny guy, but long hair. Um is like, oh my God. And then instantly, hey, <laughs> there's Melvin. And runs over to his dog, which it's is uh, cozying up to one of the ladies in bikinis. Well, if Melvin and he doesn't give okay. a shit anymore about lady tied to a tree. Well, because if Melvin thinks they're okay, then it must be fine. It's just so instantaneous. I'm like, is this someone being killed? Or, oh my doggy with lady. Yeah. Pretty lady. <laughs> Man, I needed Jerry Lewis on the side. Man, Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis on Frankenstein Island. Now that's a picture. You have sold me, and I want that now. Well, uh, hey there, little buddy. Come on, check out. Let's uh, go talk to these but Melvin, and... I can't find Melvin. He's <laughs> only with the nice and the lady with the bikini. Well, this one seems to be strung up between two trees, but I don't want to rush to any judgment about what they're up to. <laughs> <laughs> Sing every song, Dean. I'm going to go find Melvin. Hi. You're on Frankenstein <laughs> Island. <laughs> There's crazy experiments. And... And that's very true. Yeah. Um, oh, my God. I just... Na, na, see, now I need to go watch a bunch of Martin and Lois movies. Um, uh, I think every day is the day yeah, to do that. I'll pull out my Blu-ray of At War with the Army. Um, <laughs> Here you go. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jumping jacks. <laughs> so, yeah. so they're And they're like... Now they, they go, all right, let's go to the village with these girls. All right, sure. That sounds good. And then we get one of so many scenes in this movie of just village activity and ceremony. Two of these guys have their shirts off and they're just being bathed by these women. That's weird. Yeah, and, and going like, and literally saying like, oh, this is strange, but just go with it. Like, they're like going, uh, this is just their way. <laughs> well, hey, I, I certainly am not going to complain about this. Uh, by the way, Dean Martin's going to continue to be in this movie now. Um, <laughs> hey, Jerry, why don't you um, go find yourself a little thing to do? I'm I'm going to stick around with the gold diggers. Yeah. Me, me over here and the gold diggers. Uh, uh, we'll stay here. I'm just going to uh, I'm just going to keep these lonely, lonely girls company for a while. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll just uh, uh, toddle along <laughs> and um, I'll, I'll sing a nice little ballad <laughs> for the ladies. Um, toddle, this is just toddle along is such a Dean Martin line. Go on, yeah, toddle along there. Uh. <laughs> this is just uh, 
it it would have been um, I mean, it still would have made no sense. Infinitely better with Martin Lewis. But here we the ladies um, are are giggling and bathing a couple of them are like, well, I guess this is what they do around this, here. This, this is literally what I wrote down. And, and I'm going to have to read my notes verbatim on a lot of this because that really is it's just it just says they go to their village Two uh girls wash two of them. One woman plays with a snake. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, I think funny guy and long hair uh, get distracted and go, oh, my God, these people are so strange. One of the ladies is kneeling in front of a mirror, doing a weird dance, looking at herself in the mirror. Yeah. And then another one. And these guys are they've never seen. He goes, I think he actually says, like, I've never seen anything like that before. Yeah. And it is a woman who's just sort of moving her arms around and her sh shoulders. And she's holding. It's not even like an exotic. It's like a garden snake, like yeah. a little green snake. I, that, and she, the she, both the, the snake and the spider in this movie are clearly harmless things. Well, the spider is a tarantula, but but, but clearly, but, you know, but it's a pet store tarantula. It's tarantulas its, are yeah. always presented as more dangerous than they are in movies. Yes, I mean, very it's true. A classic I've had a tarantula it's... crawl yeah. on me. Yeah, I know. Yeah, um, it's just it's like they're not and they're not really poisonous. Uh, yeah, um, yeah but but the thing is, is that this thing, uh, you know, they look at it like I can't believe how bizarre and exotic this is. Dear and God, it's the man, tamest, tamest, yeah. dumbest thing. This Why look over like, there? looking at a green snake and dancing around. You're like, it's, okay. It's yeah. as if we've crossed the nexus of reality. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt my sanity. This is a movie that none of these guys really, but this is a movie that totally should have that kind of voice for these guys. Like, dear God, I've never seen such well sights before. This all feels uh, quite like, have you ever see, uh, what is it? The Lost Skeleton of Cadavera? Yes, I think. it's from like the '90s or early 2000s, and it's an independent, uh, you know, cheaply made. But the whole thing was they were intentionally making a bad '50s sci-fi horror movie. Um, so they are adapting the whole thing, and everyone talks like this. And there's a scientist in a white coat, and it's very much like this kind of thing. They really nail it very well. It had a sequel, I think, at some point. I enjoyed it, mm -hmm. but this almost looks like someone's trying to do a parody yes and that's what's amazing is that no mm. this is something they they really thought they were doing yes why doing the work what sights my eyes see a woman <laughs> with a snake truly it's, in my lifetime i never thought i would uh it's yeah terrible. it's really bad uh so the uh, yeah some kind i did once again some kind of tribal dance starts men are transfixed by it yep uh then they go out the next morning I, it must be because suddenly it's daylight and they go out to untie the woman from the tree and they're like what is this some form of punishment and they're like no it's initiation and they're and no further questions this guy just goes oh <laughs> initiation then all right he goes yeah you know we have initiations back where we come from Oh, Great. funny! Funny guy has paddled some people at a fraternity, right? <laughs> oh, I think it's gone beyond that. But y yes, yeah. He, right. Funny guy has participated in something that ended uh, hazing rituals. <laughs> <in college. laughs> I was cleared of all charges. I was only nineteen at the time. Uh, but the university had to put in strict rules about hazing in fraternities <laughs> after what we did. Uh, it oh. was terrible terrible behavior but also kind of funny um <laughs> so. i mean his family's never recovered but still <laughs> yeah so they there was initiation great then all, now we cut to a woman who's controlling two spiders seemingly with her mind i don't know yeah yeah, yeah. she's doing like hand gestures over these spiders as if she's controlling them but oh no here comes trouble some guy dressed as a henchman from batman 66 pops out of nowhere and grabs this woman yeah, henchman out of Batman sixty six. Yeah. I also kept thinking of the Beagle Boys from uh, from Disney cartoons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's it's stereotypical, like black knit cap, yeah, uh, black turtleneck, and then just blue jeans. Yeah, I'm, and I'm, and yeah, comes out of the 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 woods, and steals one of the ladies away, and then they they all run after him. And one of the guys, maybe science guy, goes, "Does this happen often?" <laughs> hmm. I don't want to react just yet. Uh, does this is this normal? Should should we be concerned? 
I mean, we saw that lady tied up between two trees. Uh, we're trying not to judge. Yeah, we that... just don't know. I was relieved when you said that was but merely initiation. Initiation <laughs> for what? I don't know. He didn't ask any fucking questions. Um, he just went, great, oh. initiation. Cool. I, Jesus. Um, <laughs> I don't know, man. I just love... I just These guys are never that weirded out by anything. And they're just like, sure. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's what I was thinking. Like, when they... I mean, right at the beginning of the movie, they are, their lives are in jeopardy. They are lost in the middle of the ocean. They land on an island and then immediately are playing goofy games with each other and talking mm. about building a raft, ignoring the one they already have. Come on! Uh, so this guy, they give chase, but this guy quickly just trips while carrying this woman and she's freed. <laughs> exciting, <laughs> exciting stuff here, man. Uh, but then we meet the two main henchmen who I dubbed Hobo and Eyepatch. Sure. Yeah. And yep. it's Eye Patch who's always <laughs> Eye Patch. <laughs> Everything is hilarious to this guy. He he is a former crew member or captain of a ship that crashed here. They but but the thing with his character is because uh, apparently all the men that we see here were crashed here yeah but uh he's always drunk yeah and he's always doing this laugh <laughs> it's actually it's actually more of a cackle it's like <laughs> it is he's he is it's, it's like you expect him to slap his knee and go <laughs> good one but good it's one literally for everything it it's is. like for everything he's like going I, I I found my missing sock. <laughs> I mean, it's it's like the director told him, "Could you give me like an evil laugh on this line?" And he went, "Great on every line, perfect." <laughs> I found little crackers for my chili. <laughs> I I hated him. I hated him so much. I was like, God, I hope this guy dies soon. He doesn't. He doesn't. He makes it all the way through yes i think that's right uh well up till the end yeah i think he, gets I, I think killed he makes by it up to frankenstein's monster, monster who, who, going berserk who really comes out of nowhere in this movie which uh, you gotta love uh because but also why not because nothing makes sense in this movie uh mm -hmm. so they they go like <laughs> you're in trouble i don't even know. i just wrote down they threaten them i don't even remember what they said because it doesn't fucking matter it's bad news. You're absolutely right. Meanwhile, we cut back to uh, the girls' village, and there are two girls who appear to be to appear to have made a skull bong. Yeah. What is this? Who knows, man? And they show it a lot. They keep cutting to them, and it's like, hey, man, cool. Because not only do these girls wear leopard bikinis, but they smoke the ganja, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, and so uh this is where they go guys we got to escape from this island but then all of a sudden Boo! ah no we were talking about escaping and now our wrists hurt very badly yeah dude i don't yeah. know what the hell's going on here um can i i mean we don't do this often either but this is one where every single one of the quotes on the IMDb page needs to be done. Oh man, yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't know if there were any. Okay, yeah. Um, how I mean, about you be Mark and I'll be Curtis? Okay. Okay, yeah. It's the uh, very first quote. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, so wait. Uh, what? what you're was Mark. It? Okay. I'm you're Curtis. Curtis. All right, gotcha. All right, so Curtis being a funny guy with the receding hairline. Yeah. It's when you mix the particular place, not here, but on the outside. Well. That's when the power hits you. The power? It's sort... It's built in. It, it's like telepathy. Telepathy? No, no. It's like telepathy. That is some of the worst dialogue I've ever heard in a did, single did movie. That, did that make sense to any of you out there? <laughs> did, it, did it make sense? I mean, really, this movie makes you feel like you're drunk because you're just going like... like you're Because it's that... It's that intoxicated feeling of trying to get to center in some way, trying to <laughs> balance yourself on any, and you're just going like, what, what, what is it? Because 
Yeah, I mean, I think I even wrote down it's some kind of telepathy, or maybe not. Like, uh... Yep. Anyway. Yep. Uh, the explanation is that the mysterious force somehow reads your mind, you're about to mention yeah. a place that isn't the island, and then makes your arm hurt? What the fuck is oh, wait, 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 this? Wait, wait, wait. And I'm angry again. We mi we missed this from the beginning, so can we read the balloonist dialogue from the start? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one do you want to be? Uh, I'll be... Uh, okay, you be balloonist number two, I'll be balloonist number one. Okay. Which is weird that balloonist number two starts, but okay. <laughs> Did you ever hear of a tornado at sea? Well, that's what Doc called it. Sounded like his balloons being torn apart. Whatever the number, it got him real good and surrounded. Surrounded? The water, man. The ocean. Any way you shake it, those poor devils either ended up on it, in it, or under it. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I mean, that's, Jesus that's, Christ. that's what we're dealing that with That was there. what we were hearing at the beginning when the two balloons were talking to each other. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh, so then they go the, the, the they go with Hobo and Eye Patch. They're going to take them to what we find out is the Frankenstein house here on the island. Mm -hmm. uh, and they want <laughs> these, these, these are the notes I have. They go with them. They walk by a house with guys milling about. Yes, that's the scene. What are they doing? Who there? Who are they? I don't know. It doesn't matter. <laughs> well, I mean, we we find out that there is a yeah. an army of kind of zombie guys. Yeah. That don't have, by the way, uh, what do they keep saying? They don't have any bloodstream. Yeah. Uh, they say that about 18 times. And there's something wrong with their eyes is why they all wear sunglasses. Yes. They're, and they're also, overly sensitive well, to light. Here's the, here's the thing. You could look at this movie and based on hairstyles, costume, everything else, you could say this must have been shot maybe in the 60s. Mm -hmm. The sunglasses, the only thing, the design of these sunglasses are very 70s. So that's where I shove it up into the 70s. They're enormous 1970s women's yes. sunglasses. These are, I remember them. My mom had these. They're the size of plates. These, like are, little, El these are Elizabeth Taylor sunglasses. That's who I think yeah. of is wearing these. Um, so they are... All the men that are the zombies are the ones wearing the black turtlenecks, the... The the knit black caps and the, the and they all wander around kind of like they're zombies and they don't do anything. Oh it's my so God. It's... one of them looks so much it has a mustache or a f fake mustache with the shades and the mustache. He looks like Robert Smigel in the De Bears uh, skits. Uh, uh, I was like going, and then Robert Smigel I, showed I, up. I believe the Rift Tracks boys refer to him as Father Guido Sarducci. <laughs> he uh, also looks like him too. And then there's the sort of roly poly bald guy who they keep calling Harry Carey. Um, <laughs> so, so, yeah, I agree with all that. Um, it's oh, it's so bad. It's just it's so bad. Okay, so let's get to okay. Now here's where they let let's enter Cameron Mitchell and because they go they end up at this dark compound and they find this old guy in a cell and he's yeah. rambling like nobody's business. What's really weird is when they find him, <clears throat> they actually say in their dialogue, like, um, it's like, uh, I can't believe we, um, we found someone else on this island. Yeah. And I'm like, you just you just met those the cackling dude, and you just walked through a whole group of people, and they're acting like he's the first person they found. Well, what about the women? Uh, he's in the cell. Um, he babbles to himself, and he keeps talking about Edgar Allan Poe. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, anyway, the, he tells them he's been there for 17 years after he Damn. shipwrecked on the island and was the lone survivor. And this guy's first question to this prisoner who says, I shipwrecked here 17 years ago. I was the lone survivor. And this guy goes, do you happen to know where we could get a gun around here? <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> You know any firearms might be, pal? <laughs> I've been here for 17 long years. <laughs> you guys have, like, a Pizza Hut? <laughs> <laughs> I am hankering for some Pizza Hut pizza right now. Do they, uh, do they accept, like, local coupons? <laughs> like, I've been here <laughs> in this cell for 17 years. Yeah, that's why I asked. I thought you would know. You've been around for a while, you know? Like, yeah, uh... <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm asking. I... God! 
God. You're looking at me all weird. Where's is there a gun around here any place? Do you have microwave popcorn? <laughs> Uh, you know, like I, the Orville I, Redenbacher I, stuff. I, Do you have any of that in there? What is going on in this movie? Like, literally, any line can be responded to with any other line of dialogue in this movie. There is it's no, true. There is no logic or correlation of the progression of dialogue. You could totally do the William S. Burroughs. You you could uh, cut out every single line of dialogue, toss them all up in the air, yeah. and then randomly tape them down onto it. It would make as much sense. Yeah, I mean, it really is. I I don't know what was in anyone's mind here anyway the the hobo and eye patch come in and they inject a sedative right into the top of his head sure yeah and they're like oh he i don't needs know why you're acting weird about that i mean that makes perfect sense <laughs> he needs a sedative from time to time <laughs> i keep forgetting you don't have the medical background i do yeah, so right. i understand yeah, yeah so anyway they take them inside to this nice very 70s looking living room uh and this is where they meet sheila frankenstein I think you need to give her full name. Uh, Sheila Which von is, Helsing Frankenstein, or Frankenstein yeah. von Helsing, right? Sheila Frankenstein von Hel van von Helsing von Helsing. All right, not Van Helsing. She, uh, what is it? She's the great granddaughter of great Doctor Frankenstein. Great great granddaughter. She married yeah. his assistant, who's two hundred years old, still alive. Yeah. Who is uh, Professor Von Helsing? I don't know what the hell, why they chose that name, or what the hell's going on. I none, none of this makes any sense. <laughs> none, of this, none of this makes sense in the movie, nor in the canon of Frankenstein. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I mean, they do talk about the monster eventually, and yeah, I mean, uh, the I secret get, of life, and all we're, that we're stuff. We're to and... assume all the standard Frankenstein stuff. Mm hmm. Anyway, she pours them some whiskey. She tells them all about this. She says that Frankenstein, Dr. Frankenstein built this island, and he still controls the island even though he's dead. Yep. Uh, and they said that it was Frankenstein who brought these guys there, and this will be great. They can impregnate the women on the island. Yes. Is this also, and it doesn't even matter if this is where it happens. It doesn't matter. Because anything at, could happen at any time in this movie. At some point, you know, the new guys, the guys, the yeah. four dudes, yep. they're like, what's the deal with those chicks, man? Yeah. yeah. And we find out um, that this Frankenstein chose this island yeah. because it was where a highly advanced civilization had landed yeah. um, in Earth's distant past. And they go, you mean like aliens? Yes. And she says, exactly like aliens, baby. Yep, she says it just like that. Yeah. And then they we find out that the women, and actually I think the guys, intuit this from what she says, which is also an amazing leap. Maybe it was Doc, because he's the smart one. Right, right, right. He goes, so these women are hybrids, and um, they hmm. they still have alien DNA. Huh. And she goes, hmm. absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so this is a jibber jabber movie about an island of jungle women who are ha part alien, and Doctor Frankenstein, uh, his brain is controlling the side. Can we put that as a poll quote on the thing? It just says a jibber jabber movie. Brendan Jones. <laughs> it just that's all it is. It's a jibber jabber there film. What I love about it, I mean, the the one thing, the only credit I'll give this movie. Yeah, it is refreshing. It is. It's admirable how little concern anyone who made this had <laughs> about it having logic, making sense, oh, yeah. a story. Oh, yeah. No one cared. No. And it's actually kind of, that's freeing. They actually said, I've written some lines on paper. They are words that you know. Yeah. And the actors just said, great. Yeah. I will say those words. I mean, the acting is terrible, but I can't believe they're saying these words with any kind of belief in them. It's amazing to me. Right. The, uh, actually, that makes all of them the best actors we've ever seen. I mean, the idea that there's any kind of like, yes, I know what I'm talking about. Because you can't. Even, let's say, okay, you're getting down to the last week of filming. Yeah. You're, and you are a, like a, a reporter. You've come to interview the director on set. <laughs> oh, man. You get him into his trailer. Yeah. It's time for you to interview him. And you say, you know, just give me a synopsis. The director would actually probably sit there going, next question. Yeah. <laughs> or he would say, uh, that doesn't really matter, does Boy, it? Boy, opening with the hardballs. Jesus, synopsis <laughs> of the movie. I thought God. this was going to be a puff piece. Yeah. Uh, geez, what? He's got, 
I go back to the Creed joke on uh, The Office. This guy's asking questions he has no business knowing about. What's the movie about? Uh, so oh, good. That's, yeah, that's kind of what it, it, it is. Just like I can't. Like what? Oh man, I would have killed to have been on set of this movie because what was what was this director who also wrote the movie saying to these actors? I know. Like, <laughs> the hell was he directing? This? Also, I should mention about Sheila Frankenstein. Uh, yes. Talk about buxom. This older lady is given a hell of a lot of cleavage here. Well, I mean, she she's a legacy uh this was kind of what her thing was mm. um i can't say i'm familiar with her that, work yeah so but this is of course late yeah for her but they're still going ah yeah if you get uh Catherine vicker uh, uh uh victor uh you gotta show that cleavage yeah come on those knockers are the star of the picture man that's what people are coming for <laughs> I, I I mean I guess I mean she looks pretty good for an older lady sure uh, but, yeah yeah but, yeah they're, they've done something weird where it's her natural uh, gray hair mm -hmm. but then they have also done a pin they've pinned on an additional piece that's like these ringlets yeah at the back of her head yeah. which are silver so it doesn't really match the rest of her hair tone oh, yeah oh the and it's so obviously an attachment i'm like what is this about the rift tracks boys have some things to say about that for sure um, <laughs> oh do they oh yes 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 they they definitely point that out uh it because it just looks weird um so yeah uh yeah she goes through all of this and then she starts talking about how the oh don't worry about th this this made me laugh so much when she goes don't worry about the guards. They've all been programmed. But uh, also watch out because some of them are highly unpredictable and violent. Well, wait, which is it? Don't worry <laughs> about them or always worry about them? No. Uh, just just worry about the Smigel one because uh, he's going to ask for some more sausage. <laughs> you, uh, you, got any, you got any sausage and uh, put, the, put the Bears game on? Bears. The Bears. The Bears. Uh <laughs> Uh, so anyway, they, they, she's like, anyway, come to the lab. Uh, and so they go into the lab, which looks like any piece of shit B-movie lab. And of course, the doc guy is like, what equipment? This is amazing down here. And he's really trying to sell that this piece of shit basement that they put a bunch of crappy props in is somehow the height of technology. Can, oh. I like when he goes, can these readings be right? Readings of what? My favorite thing <laughs> is the, um, the, uh, they, they got, I don't know, one of the, probably their kid, their high school kid to do a yeah. big chart yeah. that says brain sync graph or something <laughs> like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it looks, I mean, I'm not good at lettering. It's one of my oh, faults sure, as yeah. a graphic designer, sure. but, but it's just like they were doing a poster for the spring dance. Uh, mm -hmm. And yes. so it's really yeah. badly painted words. Yeah. And then it's a bar graph with like, and it looks like they used electrical tape to do the, the line, the yeah. jagged line going up brain sync graph. And it's huge too. It's on a back wall of the thing. It's in almost every shot. And you're like, Holy God, that's on set. <laughs> that's in a movie. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this poor actor has to be like, my God, this equipment is light years beyond anything I've ever seen. <laughs> Come on, man. God damn. this! It's The movie keeps dooming itself in so many ways. You know what I mean? It's like, come on, you're asking me to laugh at this, right? Yeah, that's the thing yeah. is that I, I can't imagine... I can't imagine anyone involved, even the clearly oblivious director, thinking that a frame of this would be taken seriously. Not even a fr yeah. frame of this. Ugh. Yeah, I mean, is anybody thinking, what a gripping thriller we're making here? Um, it's just... So then they go over, and her 200-year-old, basically, corpse of a husband is laying in a bed over there, Von Helsing. And they go yeah. like, hang on, if I turn on the juice here, he'll get moving. Yeah, yeah, it's like, if we up this, uh, he'll be uh, he'll be sentient for like two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> And they wake him up. He's like, and, oh, hey, hey, how's it who, going, honey? Ha, 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 ha. They, they haven't said he's 200 years old. Uh, they try to no, use that as yet. like a zinger. It's like, well, your husband seems ill. And, and you keep mentioning that he was an assistant of Dr. Frankenstein, but Dr. Frankenstein lived so long ago. She goes, yeah, 
Don't you get it? My husband's 200 years old. Yeah. Oh, and then wow. someone makes an Anna Nicole Smith joke, and then the whole scene goes black. <laughs> hey, Rift Tracks got there, man. Did they? They did. They made an Anna Nicole Smith joke in this scene. That just means <laughs> that me and Rift Tracks yeah. think alike. I think I think they're saying is like, this is the movie that inspired her to marry a 200-year-old <laughs> man. Uh, uh, so anyway, this is my notes because this is real. It cuts from that scene to just randomly the the island girls doing a dance with fire. Yep. It just hard cuts to that. No context. Yep. Suddenly they're twirling fire and putting it in their mouths and you're like Yeah, and it's like later that night. Yeah. Meanwhile. <laughs> and you just, and it goes on for a while. It, uh, once again, do not watch this movie. But in a in a hypothetical world where you did watch this movie, you're going to want to keep your finger on that fast forward button because there's a lot of just like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. It's, a, it's what, an hour and... It's an uh, hour and 37 minutes. 37 minutes. Yeah. Good God. Yeah, it's 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 really bad. <laughs> there's, a fun, like we've already said, there's no story in this. Um, and I can't imagine a cut that would make this better. But it is, it, even this nonsense has, as we have said these stretches where people are just walking around and some kind of jibber jabber happens mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. there is a, a fire dance scene. You're yeah. like, it looks like the women, they are attractive young women sure. in fur bikinis, but it seems like they found maybe like a, a burlesque group yeah. because the whole thing of like, she does the snake thing. She does the fire twirling. Mm -hmm. It seems like they probably found some sort of one of those alternative arts groups. It's like, yeah, just put these bikinis on and we'll pay you a little bit of money. And you do your thing where you get strung up between two trees. <laughs> they all have their talents, but they only a couple of them have any dialogue because the one that, that Melvin went to yeah. becomes the, sort of girlfriend of long hair. <laughs> yeah. um, You're talking about none of these uh, romances uh, have any depth to them, e even remotely. It's more just like, I guess, yeah, pair up, gentlemen. <laughs> Everybody find your partner. Yeah. Doc gets stuck with... Uh, Come I mean, on, again, Jerry, go ahead and grab a... She, he yeah. ends up with uh, Professor Dr. Yeah. Come Frankenstein on there, von Helsing. Uh, Come on there, Jerry, pick a girl already. Um... <laughs> they so many very yeah. nice but they all scare me yeah. with the bikini uh, you better pick soon Jerry I've already fucked most of them so uh... <laughs> <laughs> bubba, 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 hey yeah <laughs> I would love the idea of a very very raunchy Martin Lewis movie called Sloppy Seconds that was shot in the, in the, towards the end oh this is horrible <laughs> yeah Jerry uh, you get my leftover yeah Oh, Dean, did you have to fuck them all? Oh, now I have the STD you had, mine. <laughs> Sooner or later, everybody's going to catch what old Dino's got. <laughs> I got so much love, I just want to spread it around, Jerry. I just want to spread it around. <laughs> it's not the only thing you're spreading, Dean. <laughs> it's not nice. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh god. god oh dear god um so uh uh let's see if we're, uh okay yeah yeah so then the, the what stops this fire dance is a a big john carradine projection hits the sky and, and talks starts talking about the power the power the power yeah anytime we do get a little glimpse of dr frankenstein and we also find out uh, I mean, it's convoluted nonsense. Um, Von Helsing, the 200-year-old bedridden old man, mm -hmm. has a clear psychic connection to the brain of Dr. Frankenstein. Yes. Um, lady, uh, Dr. Baron Frankenstein Sheila. Von Helsing. Sheila, Sheila Frankenstein Sheila. Von Helsing. Yeah. I'll just say Sheila. <laughs> I just, I just, there's something, when she said, I'm Sheila Frankenstein, it just made me laugh. Uh, oh, yeah. And, and it literally is, yeah. I think, her intro. She wasn't yeah. going, Hi, I'm Sheila Frankenstein. <laughs> yeah, um, like, but uh, who? <laughs> she, uh, uh, she says that she can only occasionally pick up the thoughts of the great doctor. Yeah. Because whatever. But also, it's uh, pretty easy because he keeps having the same thoughts. Yes, it's true. Every time he pops up, he's saying some variation on the same thing about the power. Yeah. Uh, and there is a quote of his in the uh, IMDb. 
Um, one of the things he says is, um, uh, I hear thee. So as I hear, mm -hmm. be thee assured, my response is forthcoming. What the fuck is that? Oh, yeah, yeah. They, they, they talk about Don't that. Don't worry. I hear you. And yeah. hang on, because yeah. I'm going to respond. That was something they brought up on Rift Tracks too. The idea that when you call him, you get like a call waiting response. <laughs> Frankenstein will be right with you. Go ahead and leave your name, number, and message after the beep. He does talk a lot about the power. Yeah. The power is coming. Yes. And he also talks about the golden thread. Yeah. And at one point he mentions a fleece. I was like, oh, are they going mythological with this? The golden fleece? I don't know. doesn't matter. Well, he, he just does jibber jabber. That's all it is. As he says, here's another. Uh, uh, well, I know. Wait, this is Von Helsing. Never mind. Well, this is actually. What, oh, okay. no. Von Helsing has a, has a quote on there, too. Yeah. Well, actually, this is what he says when they fire him up for the first time. <laughs> he says, the power will start again. The backup brain was hidden years ago, just in case. He does not say that there. That's what I love about it but is when he, that's when he, actually very close to the end of the oh, movie. When, he, when, he, when they light him up, he does say, the power, the power. Yes, yes, okay, he so does say the power, that's what the power. I mean. Dude, I don't know um, when anything happens in this movie. Well, the, the re that, <laughs> I just that's, watched it. <laughs> That stood out to me because I laughed so hard because they're Dr. Frankenstein's brain, which funny guy points out and goes, huh, look at this. <laughs> you got a brain. There's a brain. You in got a jar. brain over here. That's pretty weird. And so it's Dr. Frankenstein's brain. And then late in the movie, when things are going chaotic and they're yeah. like, oh, no, that is our only connection to the genius that is Frankenstein. Yeah. Preserve it. And it gets smashed. That is when Von Helsing from his bed that he never gets out of yeah. just goes, don't worry, we've got a backup brain. Don't you worry, folks. We got another brain. A backup brain. Bring on the backup brain. It's not I as mean, good, but it shall do. I know that sci-fi itself is made up of dumb, weird yeah, concepts sure. and jibber-jabber. Yeah. But backup brain. Yeah. I just, I, I was like, Oh, we broke this brain. Somebody get the backup. Oh, my God. Hang on, let me... Uh, let me ratchet up this skull while we get the spare brain out of the trunk. Um, God damn it. Uh, <laughs> wow. Then, okay, let's talk about this scene, which is amazing, which is... I can't. That took everything out of me, John. The guys examine the garden they have, and they're like, man, look at these crops. <laughs> this I is, know. This is I the point know. in the movie where I went... Oh, so nothing's ever going to happen is what this movie is. Right? No. Like, um, what's weird is the these normal people, the, the four people, have been exposed to weird thing after weird thing yeah. after weird thing. And they just they just stumble along like, oh, this is cool. And they also yeah. are seeing things that are that are threatening and disturbing. And yet they're all kind of like, God damn, look at the size of these cucumbers. Yeah. Man, how how how'd you grow this? This is impressive. And they say more nonsense. Yeah, the guys we haven't even gotten they to the tank with. that has a body in it that they keep sprinkling. Oh, well, that's coming up in the next scene powder and here they go. Well, if you guys like that, do you guys want to see our sports? Oh, oh God, <laughs> oh, there there are a lot of non sequiturs in this movie, yeah. which I think actually might be cuts. Like sure, I, I, sure. I mean, the script is horrible, but literally you'll drop in the middle of a sentence because I think the woman, one of the women, says, "You like sport? Well, that's where the sports happen over there." Oh, and, and that is in reference to nothing. No one had mentioned sports. No, but it's like, oh, you like sport? Well, that's where the sport happens. The best over there. though is the cut to funny guy going sports. You say. Like, I sure do love sports. <laughs> and the sports is this. Yeah. They go to the middle of the compound, mm -hmm. and all of mm -hmm. the um, <laughs> all of the, the thug zombies in the sunglasses, the big thug, are just shuffling back and forth. And that's kind of the sports until one of them, who's Asian, starts moving like an actual martial artist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, this guy really baffled me because there's a lot of I, cutaways to this guy, and I'm like, is he like a character <laughs> in this? Thing? I don't know. He's like an important figure. Well, you would think that if he if he has this okay. kind of motor skills, these kinds of movements, as opposed to the rest of the zombies, maybe yeah. they would say, oh, he's a special one or yeah. something or whatever. But no, just one of them is Asian and starts doing like Jackie Chan moves on on. Um, is it funny guy that he goes up against yes, or is it because, long hair? No, well, it's it's know. funny guy because I write 
Uh, <laughs> for some reason, funny guy fights one of the henchmen. Yeah. It's not really, I don't and know. And again, there's no sport. And kind of like, it, don't the they guy, kick something around a little yeah, bit? Yeah, the guy playing funny guy, I love his fake bad karate moves throughout the oh, movie. He goes oh, into a lot bad. of, Whoa, yeah, like slow karate chops and stuff. Down, and, and there's a lot of excellent oh, camera oh, angles oh. where you see the eight inches of air between, uh, oh, you know, a yes. thrown punch and someone's jaw. Oh, yes. Oh, God. Um, this is bad stuff. Uh, are the listeners getting this? This movie's really bad. I, I can't. I don't know if we've made this clear. <laughs> this is so bad. This thing is atrocious. Really, it is. I mean, and 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 I, I, at this point, I really am like mouth agape. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you? What are you doing? Like what? There. <sighs> There's nothing that connects. There is nothing, like I say, that that leads a scene to scene. We don't even know what a uh, what the grand plan is, other than mm -hmm. eventually we get the impression that Doc is so fascinated by what's going on, mm -hmm. uh, as in in the lab. Because remember how impressed he was right. that maybe he is being somewhat mind warped somewhat uh mind controlled that he starts assisting in the experiments so the rest of the guys are still talking about a raft man if only they had an inflatable one that was waiting oh. on the beach <laughs> but they keep talking about a raft and finding a gun and getting off the island where doc keeps spending and of course developing weird relationships with mm -hmm. the fur clad mm -hmm. women and then and uh doc is in the lab going no i think frankenstein was on to something um, and he may have discovered the, the secret of life. Mm -hmm. And they go, yeah, I read that book. Uh, was there really a creature? And she goes, oh, yeah, there was. Or maybe it's Von Helsing goes, yeah. Uh, in fact, he's he couldn't die. He was an idiot, but he was really strong. He couldn't die. So we, we keep him chained up to the bottom of the lake. Yes. What? Yeah. I, Brendan, you've done me a great service. I think you just covered about 40 minutes of the movie that we don't have to talk about. I that, honestly, I... What could we say if we go scene to scene? Yeah. Um. Uh, let me just start because that that is basically the gist of what happens in the middle of the movie here. So let me <laughs> let me just point out a couple oddities then that that are here. Uh, oh, the, a couple. Yeah. The, okay. The, the shirtless Asian guy we mentioned earlier. There's a scene <laughs> where he has a syringe of something and he injects a mannequin yes. with it. Yes. Yes, this makes no sense. In the lab, there is a mannequin, which this movie being so cheap and keep showing us these spirit Halloween store skeletons yeah. and, you know, that yeah. kind of stuff. So yeah. for half a second, are they trying to convince me that's a body that he's doing it to? You know what? I thought the same thing. Because I thought, okay, uh, is, this, is this supposed to be a character? But he does. He injects a syringe into a mannequin. Yeah. Yeah. It, it leads to nothing. Oh, no. The mannequin is still there in the big fight scene, and I use big in air quotes, <laughs> fight in air quotes, yeah. and scene in air quotes. Um, There's not one big quote. Each word is separately each word, quoted. Yeah, because yeah, big, yeah. no. Yeah. Fight, no. Yeah. Scene, no. But it goes back to Batman 66. It feels like it's it's designed like a Batman 66 fight. It kind of does. Uh, but but ba it's more exciting on Batman, obviously. And, I, and the music is always selling that, and the canted angles. And Oh, speaking of the music in this, it's all it's all stuff they got public domain, like uh, old 1940s horror thriller music. And then, in fact, right at the first scene on the beach, there's all like dun dun dun. They are yeah. castaways. And the second the guys start They're running after each other, it goes. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, it's goofy I, now. Yeah, but I, I should have just turned it off. I on. should have turned it off five minutes in and called you and said, this, John, we're not doing it. I, you know what? I thought you, you sent me an email last night, I think, and it and it said Frankenstein's <laughs> Island. I thought this is where he's going to tap out because I, 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 I watched I, half of it yesterday and the other half today. I couldn't sit through the full 97 minutes all at once. Uh, I, I did it. That's amazing. You are a stronger man than me. Uh, but uh, OK, so we have the shirtless guy injecting the mannequin, which is weird. Uh, okay, at a certain point, the sunglassed henchmen start getting electrocuted and grow Halloween store fangs? Yes. What is that? I don't know. <laughs> and it, it happens it is, to one of is... the, at the end of the movie, it happens to one of the bikini girls as well. 
Yes. I don't know. It's never explained. It never pays off. Nobody ever bites it never anyone pays with off. the fangs. And there are a few like attempts at I'm we're gonna trip you out, man, because mm-hmm. there's a whole oh. the spinning hypnotism wheel ooh, thing is happening ooh, ooh, and there's ooh, ooh, weird ooh, ooh. shots. When and it goes yes, to the translucent hand in the space field and it's yes. just like, oh, we're doing a space odyssey shit here now, huh? And when John is saying, you know, uh, actually, I don't. It these are worse than Spirit Halloween Store. These are yeah. like Kmart. Uh, this, yeah, this is Dollar Tree Vampire Teeth. Yeah. Dollar Tree Vampire Teeth. Yeah, he is not making no. that a joke for no. joke. These joke. are the van- vampire fangs I had as like a five year old. You know, and it's so clearly that yeah. that I I was staring at the screen, dumbfounded. I was like, you are a filmmaker, have yeah. made films. You think you can put that on screen? Like, at that point, because it doesn't matter, wouldn't you just go, I just cut the fangs. If they're going to look like that, just take it out. Exactly, just cut it. You'd go, yeah. uh, I thought maybe if I lit it right, it might look, no, nah, it doesn't look good at all. Nope. This guy said, everything's in. He um, said, everything's in. Another one of my favorite scenes is once the science guy has sided with the Frankenstein woman, Yeah. the other guys come into the lab, and they're like, what are you doing in here? And she goes, ugh. Will you get them out of here? Like, will you get your idiot friends out of our lab? Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> and even though he's mind controlled, he does go, I understand your concerns, but this is brilliant science and it deserves a chance. And they're like, dude, she's got you under her spell or whatever. And they they go back outside where where shaggy bum and eye patch giggly guy are waiting. Whatever. Yeah. God damn. Damn this movie! Well, and I'm certain, so mad. At a certain point, the drunk hobos, as I call them, um, have <laughs> captured a goat, which apparently is part of this whole thing too. Well, all right. So <laughs> this is what I love. <laughs> this is what I love. So thank God Doc has come along because uh, Sheila has been trying all these experiments on her own because her 200 year old husband can only wake up for two minutes every few days or whatever. Um, and, and so Doc has these brilliant ideas for how to restore life to, uh, obviously not Dr. Frankenstein that might happen someday, but first let's get your husband Von Helsing back up and healthy. So he goes, look, why don't we just give him a transfusion of blood with this kind of something in it? And she's like, great. And he goes, have you tried animal blood? And she goes, Oh. I thought of it. I just never... And it's like this huge breakthrough. Yeah. And he's like, quick, bring me animal blood. So that's why there's a <laughs> Any animals you can find. Literally anything. It doesn't matter. And then he also goes, hmm, we also need type A. And who has that? Uh, the crazy old sailor, Cameron Mitchell, yeah. has that same type. So get him out of the cell. We're going to use his blood, too. Hilarious. So they're just pumping blood uh, into... And at one point... My, my favorite part of this, though, is... They, they're mixing that, but also then drunk hobo guy comes in with the goat we saw him just capture, and he brings <laughs> yeah. it up, and Sheila Frankenstein goes, no, no, we have enough animal blood. We don't need that Yes, one. I thought, what, I what was the point of any of that then? We watched him well, trap this goat and go like, man, if I have to catch another goat, I swear. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, but, but that was actually them uh, doing good. That's, that's good screenwriting rules is that you're coming in the middle of the action. <laughs> They've already gotten That's lots in of media animal res, blood. man. Uh, They've already gotten animal yeah. blood, and this is the one that we're oh, good. Wow. You don't need now, that one extra Now I goat. can imagine the other scenes of them taking uh-huh. goat blood. Uh huh. The movie really would have dragged if we had seen them capture an animal for every single bit of the transfusion. I would not put it past this piece of shit to do that, though. Um, That was the original cut. (laughs) (laughs) My note just says, the lab is good on goats. Good on goats. (laughs) They also uh, kidnap one of the, the. They also kidnap one of the girls. Yes. Uh, and they what drain her of blood because they're wheeling out her corpse later. It's under a uh, sheet. Yes, and she's one that we have met at some point, or at yeah. least has had something of a a name. So we're supposed to be very sad that they drain her. And what I do love is that Doc, who is, you know, he's one of us he's mm-hmm. one of the the normal people who ended up on the island but I, I love that he's so brainwashed now he's like we couldn't save her well yeah. that's a piece of shit yeah. anyway it apparently didn't have the effect we wanted anyway so go get cameron mitchell yeah yeah so they've had a lot of goat blood they drained one of this the furry uh, fur bikini ladies and they just toss her on the pile 
Yeah. And then they get Cameron Mitchell and they get another one of the furry bikini ladies. In fact, the one that long hair yeah. is into. And this is where things get even greater. Oh, well, because this is where the guys bust in, right? To save the day. Yes. But With also their, Cameron oh. Mitchell, who has uh, he's done all the Poe quotations while he's in the yeah. cell. And he's talked about his long lost Lenore. And he actually says, Poe got that from me. Mm-hmm. And again, I'm thinking, what the fuck are you on about, man? How old are Poe you, got buddy? the whole Lenore thing from me. Was this before because, or after he solved that string of murders based on his own writings that, yeah. uh, that John Cusack yeah. made? That yeah, movie where, where Edgar Allan Poe suddenly had a growth spurt. <laughs> uh, a very famously short man becomes John Cusack, who's 6'4". Yeah, big, tall John Cusack, broad-shouldered, kickboxer John Cusack. Why didn't he turn that down? I mean, he's a good actor. Oh, I love I'm, him to I'm death. One of my favorite actors. Yeah, I love Cusack. But, but you know, him, she, she's just gone, I can't do Poe. I can't, I don't look like Poe. I'm this huge dude, dude. Have you been paying attention to the parts he, he's taken in the last few years? Because All right, get off my back. I, I did watch that movie, though. I've, oh, I did, I did too. Of course I did. <laughs> I watch most of his movies, even if they're shit, because I like Cusack. I read a mystery novel that was Edgar Allan Poe teaming up with uh, Davy Crockett, elderly uh, old mm. Davy Crockett solving a mystery. That sounds I love good. that kind of speculative Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yo, that I love, yeah, because there's like Edgar Allan Poe and Sherlock Holmes stuff I've seen, and mm-hmm. Edgar Allan Poe as mm-hmm. a Sherlock Holmes type. That's all great. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. and it wasn't it you who said you didn't have the stomach to read my fan fiction that was uh, uh, Doc Holiday uh, <sighs> against Jack the Ripper <laughs> oh, no that actually sounds like something I would love because I love Doc Holiday um, oh I, I did send it to you I think you said it was too violent <laughs> Yeah, that sounds like me, a man who famously hates violence and fiction. Maybe that wasn't you. I thought I'd sent you that story. Anyway, you regardless. Because I definitely would have read that and so probably read the whole in point, the violence. The whole point is Cameron Mitchell yeah. on this slab, they're both giving blood. He looks at the girl and he goes, you look familiar. And she goes, do I? And he goes, yes, you're my Lenore. And she goes, I sincerely doubt it. And he goes, and so... What I thought before was he was talking about his long lost love, yeah. and we all thought, oh, it's his wife, Lenore. Now he's going, don't you remember when we washed up on the shore? I thought you were dead, but you're my daughter, Lenore. I used to sing you a song, and she goes, I do remember that. <laughs> so she, fur bikini girl, literally is his daughter. Yeah. It literally is his daughter in yeah. this, and they're both being drained of blood to help Von Helsing out. <laughs> because when he talks about Lenore, I wanted to go, like, yeah, you know, you know Lenore? I gave Poe that. That was me. <laughs> that would have been great if he was like, going, I'll tell anybody, even this chick over here, it's also getting uh, bled. Hey, 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 remember that uh, yeah. that uh, the poem, the Lenore thing? Yeah. Uh, that was me. That's this guy. Yeah. 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 I was alive in 1830, whatever the fuck, he, and uh, totally gave him that idea. He was going to write a thing called The Crow. I said, no, 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 Edgar. No, no, no. The oh. Raven. Yeah. Raven. <laughs> Two syllables. It's It's got, it's a more musical. Yeah. Crow. Crack, you can't do shit with Crow. Crack the whole thing Raven. wide open, buddy. Uh, <laughs> Poe wouldn't have been shit without me. That's all I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> Poe would have been shit without me. Yeah. <laughs> That's guy, his last line guy, in the movie. This guy was Poe's um, ghostwriter. Um, but uh, yes, this is where the guys bust in. We're very nearly at the end of the we movie. Really, the guys bust in, and I laugh so hard because the three of them are lugging this World War II mounted machine gun. <laughs> And what's even better is uh, we see Funny Guy, I think, is the one that discovers it. Yeah. And he goes, I, I found a gun over here. It's kind of, and they go, did you really? He goes, yeah, it's from the Civil War, though. Oh, it's, oh, no. <laughs> he said Civil War. And yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. I know enough that when I saw it, I was yeah, like, I did. I missed, not a civ- I missed like, that That's one. not a Gatling gun. That's, yeah. a, that's a, whatever. It's a it looks totally like, 1930s, yeah, it looks 1940s. like a, maybe a 50 caliber from like World War II era. Yeah, but so it, they but set it what's up. What's great is at, it's it's huge over. and heavy because it's something you would mount on something. It's yes. on like a bipod or a tripod actually, yeah. and it has the belted shells. Yeah, the, the, and so and, they're lugging. They have to. They burst into the room lugging this thing, and then they have to go over to the corner and set it up. That's they not, set it up and to point it at one of the doors because they know it'd be great if yeah. it'd be great if the bad guys came in through the door. They did. And yeah. then they're behind them. It would have been, oh, shit. Yeah, they should have pointed it. it in the other direction. Jesus, Jerry, I told you. God, they were going to come in that door. Come you on, You said man. left to right, left to I didn't know it was pointing oh, at the good, high. Good God, Jerry. I'm tired of your <laughs> bullshit. 
<laughs> yeah, that would have been in sloppy seconds. It's one of the later ones where they're going, we can cuss now? Yeah. I'm so tired of his shit. <laughs> one of my favorite things, and I highly recommend, it's probably on YouTube. Google find um, the Caddy radio ads outtakes. Okay. Um, I haven't, and I, it is, I've heard plenty of radio ad outtakes, but that one I have not heard. It's like 2 a.m. in the morning, probably after one of their shows, and they're yeah. trying to do radio ads for the caddy, yeah, and yeah. they never get through it. It's like, so come out and see me and Jerry do some great, crazy things, and the movie is coming out called The Caddy. Yeah. And then you have Jerry going, with a cock on it, and yeah. then everyone in the booth laughing. Oh, for it's Christ. Great. For Christ's sake, Jerry. Jesus Christ. With a cock on it. Oh, boy. Um, man, oh, so... man. I've been carrying your little ass for years. Uh <laughs> I'm trying to sing a love song to a nice lady, and then the camera pans over to Jerry making faces at a monkey. Oh, for the love of <laughs> It's one of my favorite quotes. That, it's, I that, think, is, that, is the, that is the best quote ever, maybe. Yeah, where they're like, why did you guys break up? Why didn't uh, you make, make more it, movies? He goes, because, you know, yeah. I'm there trying to do a thing, and then the camera cuts away, and then Jerry I, making faces at a monkey. I love, though, that at some point, Dean was like, these movies could have had substance. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You know, we were we weren't dealing with the themes yeah. we used to deal with when we did the Stooge or the Patsy. Or, yeah. Uh, oh, the Patsy. I mean, that that was a real script there. Uh, I do love Lewis and Martin. Oh, Martin and Lewis. I I do too. But it just it's so funny that it's just like, man, I'm really trying to act over here, and Jerry's <laughs> fucking around. Uh, <laughs> it actually was more like uh, I could have been out playing golf. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Why even bother to show up? Yeah. God damn it. Uh, he was getting shoved to the background and oh all Jerry's boy. antics were being yeah. shoved. And I to loved the front I mean of course I love Dean. Dean's amazing. Uh Dean's amazing. Yeah, and I have. Dean's like, oh, I want to go play a drunk in a John Wayne movie. One of the best celebrity bios you'll ever read oh, yes. is Dino Brilliant. Living High in the Dirty Business of Dreams. God damn is that a good book. Tom Hanks has had the rights to that for so long and has tried to make that into a movie forever. He's I always, hope not with himself as a star. Oh, he's always boys, seen himself as Dean Martin. That's always been. I, I'm sure he would dream. nail it. It's just the again the the divide between the look. He's just yeah. like wow. I that's that's that was like a dream role for him is to play Dean Martin. Hanks has wanted to do that forever. Um. So anyway, uh, and that. Oh wait, we have to talk about Frankenstein. Yeah, yeah, again? yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so then. You think, oh, well, action's about to happen. We have a magic machine gun. Instead, there seems to be this negotiation where it's like, come on, fellas, let me do the experiment. And they're like, no, that's a bad idea. People will die. Yeah, but the science of it will... And you're just going like, they're literally just arguing about whether or not they should do this experiment. No one's doing anything. It is funny guy and science guy going, come on, man. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, at what do you mean? At some point... Jesus Christ. Uh, this movie, at man. some point, they try to... They they give you the um, the emotional beat of doesn't uh, bikini lady find dead bikini lady? It's like things have gotten serious. Yeah. It's not just about should we do the experiment? They have literally already this, killed someone, drained her. This is blood. where I want this woman to be like, all right, let's execute them. Yeah, <laughs> I would have been on board. Get them on their knees. One thing let's I want to see out. all the people in this movie die. Yeah, um, <laughs> this is the only movie where I want an atomic bomb to land on the <laughs> island and just obliterate everyone from existence. Oh. We'll talk about obliterating pe or obliterating people from existence because that comes out of nowhere when we start shooting pew pew guns in this movie. Yep. All of a we sudden, pew pew guns. Ray guns come out during this final battle. Uh, All right. During the final battle, what we need to address is yeah. it's it's uh, zombie dudes. Yeah. Versus bikini ladies yeah. and our our guys yeah um and the worst fight choreography of all time <laughs> yeah extremely well, slow before, moving before the fight and begins, occasionally before the fight, people just moving back yeah. and forth in the background like yeah. they won't notice they just need motion no we all notice they, uh, that you're just moving back and forth and sheila frankenstein fires up this machine which somehow activates the frankenstein monster that's out in the lake yes and he busts we, out, we and I'm going like, oh my monster. god, the Frankenstein creature makes an appearance with 15 minutes left in this thing. Yep. Brrr. And the guy is and literally just going, he looks and swinging his arms from side to side. He's got the classic Karloff look, except for he's just skin toned, yeah. not green, obviously, or gray. Yeah. Um, 
And no offense to Funny Guy, but Funny Guy is one of those receding hairline dudes with a high forehead. And I just, mm-hmm. I, I kept looking at the Frankenstein monster going, kind of looks like the brother of Funny Guy. Well, um, <laughs> that would have been great. Wait a minute. Doug? <laughs> and Frankenstein's creature, uh-huh. uh, the guy is is doing the kind of shorthand uh, Boris Karloff impression you would do if someone said, do Frankenstein's monster. Uh, yeah, he's just swinging the arms around or out just in front of him, wildly swinging them from side to side. Like that's yep. all he's doing. It's insane. And he hears the fight and is like, "That's where I need to go." <laughs> Frankenstein so he quickly shows oh, up. I never called it a fight. I only called it a mild tussle in my. It notes. is a mild tussle. Yeah, that is exactly what, what it is. Well, because they go to the 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 creature comes through the door and they're like, "Let him have it!" And of course, the gun jams because it's yeah, yeah. forty years old. Uh, and they don't have the budget to actually fire it. I know, and I did think, why even introduce it if you're not going to shoot this thing? Mm-hmm. My God. They could have mm-hmm. found a rifle on the island. Why go with this prop? Because what? Because it was just lying around, and they're like, that looks cool. And it's just, the whole thing is, oh, my God. It's just It just adds to, it's awkward to deal with this big gun, and then it doesn't work, so it doesn't matter. Oh, God. I can only deep sigh. Like constantly thinking oh, about what I watched. The best part of the best part of this final deep. tussle, though, is mm-hmm. when the dog runs in, barks yes. at some people, and then runs yes. right back out. And you're yes. like, because they make a point of like, here comes the dog to do nothing. You think it <laughs> might end up being hero dog, like yeah. it saves, or it, it maybe nope. it, it it trips a thing that nope. makes an explosion it barks a couple times it comes and in goes, it barks well, a couple times and what i love about it I is tried. all right so the camera's f- focusing down so you can see the dog on the floor and it's barking up at i think frankenstein's monster it is, yeah. is fighting somebody yeah so it's just their legs the legs of the frankenstein monster and the person they're fighting yeah and again i don't know if it's like well don't move too much you might spook the dog who's trained to come in and do a bark thing because it's literally it looks like they're kind of just dancing sort of like yeah. they're doing like a back and forth tango thing from just where their legs are moving we're not seeing like movement of punches being thrown or whatever yeah and yeah, the yeah, dog yeah. barks and as you say it runs back out yep and then it's like Holy well f- fucking hell. i did my best and uh, i'm out of here now uh, and at some point um again you're constantly waiting for the frankenstein monster to be a threat or get shot or do a thing not really but it's constantly doing like a ah and it's posing all the time in front of the bank of weren't you waiting for it like karloff or something for it to pick somebody up and throw them yes yeah that never yes but also it was a ticking time bomb because they're always posing it in front of like the machinery we go oh we've seen we know what happens he he'll end up going into the machinery and things will start popping and exploding yeah um but also at some point the brain gets threatened or gets smashed and that's where we have the classic line of von helsing saying don't worry about it sheila i've got a backup brain yeah oh let him destroy that one the fool he doesn't know well they they do say um without the brain the brain is the source of the power on the island so how when it gets destroyed Yes, yeah. when it gets destroyed, there is what like a short blackout kind of thing or something. I don't know. Smoke starts filtering in, and people are coughing, and yeah, uh, and then yeah, one of these guys just goes, "Oh wait, we have a ray gun," and starts blasting these women out of existence. Yep. What? You can't just drop that into a movie. Don't you realize, John? At this point, we've only established one of the women that we care about. Uh, the other thing I love is. The Asian guy is on the ground, and the one of the women has dropped the spider on his chest. He's like, eh, "Oh yes!" Eh, while she slowly lowers the snake onto him, he's like, "No!" no! It's a close up of a guy <laughs> with his shirt open on the ground. Yeah. He's still wearing his big Liz Taylor sunglasses. Yeah. They have put a tarantula on his chest, and all it's doing is kind of walking around. But while he's going, ah! and then she leans over him again with a tiny little harmless snake, and he's just like going. I'm going to put this on you, too. Mm-hmm. It is so painfully stupid. <laughs> I'm cramping up, John. Just I know, I talking know. Talking about this movie, I'm cramping from the... It's terrible. It's so, I have PTSD from and then Frankenstein. This whole Island. thing is like, quick, guys, we got to get to the raft and get off this island. They're like, what about the girls? And, and the girl goes, no, he's my father. I have to stay with him. And yes, this, yeah. And yeah, this guy the just, lady's going to stay with Cameron and Mitchell. And this guy just goes... 
Well, don't worry. We'll come right back for you. It's hard cut to we're in hard a, cut we're in to a, the mainland. Yeah, and we're in a, 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 a what, what did I say he was the colonel's office? Yeah, the colonel's office. Yeah. There are military men standing around. And he around. says, he says, fellas, you just don't have enough money to book Elvis. All right. Um. <laughs> I told him he'll do the songs I picked. I'm the one who picked Clam Bake. Yeah. I think it was a great song. Oh, I'm sorry. Anyway, what were these fellas in my office to talk about? Uh, Frankenstein <laughs> Island? Um, yeah, I didn't expect the Colonel to be in the movie. Um, yes. <laughs> Colonel Tom Parker? <laughs> That's right. I'm here to save everyone from Frankenstein Island. Uh, and I, from good management. I'm and having a, a career. I'm still alive, right? There's no way he was alive at this point. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Colonel Tom Park. No, he definitely was. He died in 97. Oh, oh, I thought you meant today. Was he no, alive when this no, movie was when made? This yeah. Made. Yeah, he was he was still alive. Yeah, it was El- really Elvis gross the fact that he outlived Elvis. That's oh, what that's by sucked. quite a bit. Um Yeah. Uh weird guy very speaking of Tom Hanks going to be very fascinating to see Tom Hanks play him. Uh, All you need is a uh, you know a big stomach pillow. <laughs> give me a give me a big stomach pillow. We're in. I do I do well. Actually, Colonel Tom Parker was German American, yes, and he so was. the Southern accent. I was about to go. Oh, I hope he doesn't do his lady killers accent. I was like, yeah. no, he probably won't because Colonel Tom Parker did not sound like that. No, he was he was he's a he's a really interesting guy. Actually, like they should just he make is. a movie about him. I you know. Let alone yeah, but it would movie. also make me mad because Colonel Tom Parker is both one of the things that uh, made Elvis great and also one of the biggest problems in his career uh, that kept him from actually doing better things. Sure. He did pick the songs. He did pick the movies. Elvis wasn't sitting there going, oh, I can't wait to do Speedway. Yeah. I just read the most wonderful script, Elvis. <laughs> it's called this one Speed- is called. It's called Speedway. Oh, this yeah. one's called Girls 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 there's a third girls the, this 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 elvis you've been looking to stretch your acting ability how about this two elvises and it's called kissing cousins <laughs> <laughs> i have something i think is going to be hip with the kids you're going to be a cool youth pastor in a movie called change of habit you'll be seducing a nun Elvis, Elvis, get this. It's you, and you're at the World's Fair. <laughs> not not, That's not the figure. county. What's it going to be called? What's, the, it, what's it going to be called? It's going to be called at the World's Fair. <laughs> was it Day at the World's Fair? Is that what it is? Uh, It might just be at the World's Fair. I think it I might just know. be, yeah. What's the title of that picture? <laughs> uh, <laughs> at the World's Fair. Uh, and I don't There know. you go. Yeah. Uh, it happened at the World's Fair. It happened the at full, the World's Fair. There is you the go. full title of that. Uh, Ooh, with Yvonne Craig. Uh, Television's Batgirl. Yes. Uh, yes, she is in it. I see that here in the full. And that's and right. He slept. A, a young Kurt Russell. And he slept with him. <laughs> well, that's great. Kurt Russell was in an Elvis movie. Yeah. And then eventually played Elvis. Yeah. Uh, Elvis plays Mike, and Kurt Russell plays Boy Kicking Mike. Amazing. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, come on there, kid. Knock that off. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> Say, uh, that's a. I wish you'd stop doing that. That's my shaking leg. <laughs> yeah, I just. Was this. I, I guess this was pretty big. And just the idea of, like, holy God, Elvis is at the World's Fair? I gotta see this. Well, I mean, to tell you the truth, until the 60s uh or i guess the mid 60s elvis's movies are terrible they all made money oh yeah because it was Elvis. well because people did go see clam bake yeah (laughs) but if you want to watch elvis is gonna make some clam good elvis movies yeah 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 yeah. bale house rock is good yeah king king creole is good yeah and then uh uh, i like uh, i like kid uh, galahad flaming star is good i like kid galahad i like the boxing one you really Eh. yeah it's it's yeah. early enough where there's actually trying to be a dramatic story. Yeah, so yeah, yeah I mean, I'll it, give you it, Kid Galahad. And I like I like boxing. I'm a sucker for a boxing movie to begin right. with. But it, it it is more movie than some of the other ones are, is what I'm yeah. saying. Other than that's where he gets out of the army at the start and he's just sitting on the back of the truck going, I'm the king of the whole wide world. And he's just like suddenly he's got a guitar and he's just doing a number and you're like 
<laughs> Who's he singing to? The fuck? I just love the fact that Speedway is him with his best buddy, Bill Bixby. That is the best thing! That Ellis and Bill Bixby! I will say I like Speedway because I love Bill Bixby. You know, uh, And you will not find an argument in myself. That guy was a star, man. I don't know what else to say. Uh, I love that guy. <laughs> He's a kind white a hot God. star. I mean... Dude, that guy, and from everything I heard, pretty, uh, pretty awesome dude. Uh, yep. Uh, didn't care for the right hand, Incredible Hulk, and can't blame him. I love that's the best part is that interview with showrunner Kenneth Johnson going, yeah, Bill was always screaming at the writers about how bad the scripts were, and I'm going, well, he was right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Dude, that doesn't make him sound like an asshole, Kenneth Johnson. He was asking them to write better material. He was asking for competence yeah. and a little craft, a little yeah. care. Can I? Can I do anything in this show? Um, <laughs> uh, we we do have to. Um... Yeah, so they explain to the colonel about, there's this crazy island, and there's people there doing experiments. He's like, well, I don't know about this, but we better check it out. Yeah, they. I, I love the fact it's like, uh, you know, let's, just based on your crazy-ass story, let's mount a military <laughs> I, operation. I will say, I did not expect this. I thought it was just going to they get off the island and that was going to be the end or the island would blow up or something. Instead, the idea that they go to the mainland, get this army colonel to bring his platoon of soldiers to the island. Yeah. And then, of course, why, what's this? It's all gone. Yeah. God damn it. Oh, even this nonsense. Yes, yeah. they... Uh, the mansion, all the nonsense is gone. There's no trace of anybody around. And then Melvin the dog shows up. And we did neglect to mention that um, a long hair and uh, and furry bikini lady shared in common their love of Melvin the dog. Yes. And at one point, uh, she gave Melvin the dog an amulet from her tribe how could, and like now how could he's a member of our this? tribe how could we forget this this is uh really well laid seeds in the screenplay yes. here yeah so when they show up on the island nothing's there and the the cor corporal or colonel goes yeah you guys made it all up you're on shrooms and walks yeah. off then melvin runs out from nowhere yeah. and he still has the medallion around his yeah. neck which proves it was all real i do love the idea going yeah you fucking doobie smoking hippies uh, yeah. <laughs> come on, realize boys. This is 1981. Right? <laughs> doesn't seem like it. Um, but uh, uh, you guys are all hopped up on your happy pills. I also love that this colonel's just like, come on, boys, let's leave them here. Yeah. They appear to just abandon these guys and yeah, leave them to their hallucinations and their pot. Don't worry, they've got an inflatable raft they've for conveniently forgotten about for the entire movie. When they roll, it would be great when they rolled up on shore. He goes, "Why'd you guys build a raft? There seems to be a perfectly usable one right there." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, and then the shot just pulls out as they're like, "But it was real." And then the movie just ends. Yep, that's Frankenstein Island. <laughs> I. I've never, uh, I've never wanted to turn one of these movies off more. Uh, I, I, we, I do think that probably both in our heads, yeah, uh, thought about contacting the other yep. one, and saying, "Let's skip this one. Let's just I, skip a week I because about, this is terrible." I got about fifteen minutes into this and actually thought about that, but I don't know. This is maybe. I, I think we both episode. said in our also in our heads. Yeah. No, we have to. We have to tough it out. Yeah. I mean, because it is still technically, we do get a Frankenstein monster in it. It does kind of count. Boy. Uh, I, Brandon, I don't always read IMDb reviews, and I won't read this whole one. I just love the beginning, the first sentence of this. I know exactly which one, but is yes, it, please do. Is it the one that says, my VCR taped this in 1986 at 2.30 a.m.? Yep. Because, yep. <laughs> uh, honestly, that's the best way to see this thing. Is Yeah, sort you, of an accidental... Your, your VCR accidentally taped it at 2.30 in the morning, and you're like... That's one thing I kind of do miss about the VHS technology, mm -hmm. was very often, if you had cable back in the day, I, I did sometimes forget to set an off time or something, or just let it run all night, Yeah, and I would just be like, what the hell is on this tape? Yeah. That's actually something uh, uh, Zucker Zucker and Abrahams, who I love, uh, when they... Before... Abrams. I thought it was Abrahams. Is it Abrams? I think it's Abrams, yeah. Jim A... Hold on. 
No, it's Abraham's. I'm not crazy. I thought it was Zucker, Zucker, and Abrams. Maybe it is. Well, I drink. Whatever. Maybe it's, it's spelled Abraham's, but I think you're right that it's pronounced Abrams. Yeah. Oh, well, that's weird. Anyway, uh, yeah, Zucker, Zucker, and Abrams. Uh, they uh, they would just record a channel all night and then see what they got, and that's yeah. where they found Zero Hour that becomes Airplane. Right. Oh, perfect. So that's... so you have to read this review. The oh my gosh. Yeah, you want me? Uh, the, 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 uh, where where was I on the? Hold on, I've got screens open here. Okay, it's uh, from 1999, by the way. Yeah, uh, I my VCR taped this movie in 1986 at 2:30 a.m. when it was supposed <laughs> to be recording King's Row. I have never been happier at the air. Here is a film I show to old friends and new loves. It's so bad, so <laughs> beyond bad, really, that this film could be a guest on Jerry Springer. Let's quickly move from the plot in 1999, remember? Um, yes. Let's move from the plot. Stranded balloonists discover themselves on an island with Jacques Cousteau-like zombies. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's a good comparison, yeah. Amazon uh -huh. women warriors and spandex leopard prints. I did think a little about Paradise Island when the women came out. Oh, uh, sure. And a weird, unresolved Frankenstein motif. Yeah, that's the thing that's interesting is the Frankenstein shit doesn't need to be here at all. Um, no. That aside, it is constant hilarity. Plastic pitchforks, the same oh, we carried yes, I forgot about at the Halloween pitchforks. as kids, are waved in front of the camera to suggest danger. I love <laughs> suggest danger. Uh, yes. a, a, a shoebox painted red on the lower half and put on a gyro is the electronic brain for the monster. We didn't talk about that yes. either, which is also yep. amazing. Oh, uh, wait, uh, wait, here we go. Hold on. Wait, I lost it. Uh, the actress playing Frankenstein's relative, Sheila. Yeah. She is a hoot. <laughs> uh, is a hoot. Uh, can you keep going with it? I, 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 yeah, is a hoot since she has seen reading her lines from Offset yeah. behind bookcases, etc. Yeah. And that I did catch it a few times. Yeah, here we the go. The ending pales since the beginning is so rapturously inane and silly. Yeah, it is not to be missed. Please don't turn off when the mighty kung fu's scene occur scenes occur or the tiny skulls appear in a glass gaslit barbecue to intimate danger i love the the suggest intimate danger like it's yes. just all these things where it's like yeah or when poor cameron mitchell appears as captain ahab slash queek <laughs> explaining how he allowed his crew to become zombies Best yeah. scene at the very beginning when the balloon crashes, the dog on board jumps off, and pees on the seaweed as the titles run. Yes. Such honesty in cinema is so rare. Yeah, it does. It it jumps off uh, the boat, and it goes and pees on seaweed while the credits are rolling, and that's when the music is starting to go. <laughs> and in fact, it actually uh, after it, the uh, the review immediately after it says the best performance on this mess is by the puppy dog in the first five minutes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone's like going, man, when that dog peed, that was the highlight of this movie. <laughs> you can just go ahead and, that's actually the thing. Don't watch this movie, but do watch it up to that point and then go ahead and shut it off. Because that's <laughs> yeah, the highlight of the Yeah, you need to see balloons film. talking to each other and then a dog peeing on seaweed. Um, Brendan, thank God next week is an all-time classic movie because... <laughs> Next week is almost like God, um, you know, feeling bad for us and yeah. delivering us manna from the heavens because, because oh my this God. was so terrible. And next week we get possibly the best movie of this decade or one of the best movies and, of this decade. And let's be honest, probably, almost certainly, the best werewolf movie ever made. Yeah. Uh, we are talking about John Landis's An American Werewolf in London. Ah, I can't wait. Oh, my God. This is this movie is just pure gold. I mean, this is just uh, an all-time classic, as we said. It's, oh, man, I love this movie. So uh, What's amazing, I mean, again, it was a success. It wasn't a huge success. Yeah. I mean, financially, it was, it was well-received. It's weird that other than that terrible sequel that happened years later, it, mm -hmm. it really wasn't. Oh, don't worry. We'll get there someday. Uh American Werewolf in Paris. I remember Oof. seeing that. Jesus but Christ. a great score by George Gershwin. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. That's an American in Paris. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah um, I think I think you were a little mistaken on that one. Uh, <laughs> I was like eh. somewhere in the 1930s, George Gershwin's going. You know what would be interesting? An American Werewolf, but in cosmopolitan Paris. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I love um, I love the idea of him doing that, and they're going. America's just not ready for it. Lose the werewolf part and just keep the American. <laughs> 
Great. Okay. Yeah, fine. Oh, I... Someday, though, someone will realize my vision. Well, <laughs> next week is what it's all about. American and uh, so sorry you guys London. had to even listen to us talk about this movie. Yeah, this movie is utter insanity and shit. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, join There's us. no nice way of putting it. No, There's join no... us next week for an American War Off in London. Uh, but in the meantime, that's going to do it for this week's episode of Campbell and Jones Meet the Monsters. I'm John Campbell. I'm Jim Jones. And remember, there are such things as monsters. The golden thread. The power.